story you are about to hear is true, but strange. That's him now, isn't it, Laura? That isn't any bird. That's Chris Langley. Now, Uncle Percy, there's nothing out there except no magnolia trees and birds. All I'm doing out here on the veranda is smelling the night air. Smells that sweet. It's Langley, a renegade, fighting for the north. And you're fixing to elope with him. Uncle Carl, you're just being paid and silly. That goes again. I see him under that willow tree. No. Come out, Langley. Come out of there. Uncle Kay, put away that pistol. Oh, Uncle that Kay. thing. Pretend. But try to stop this. <laughs> ABC Radio Network presents Strange. True Stories of the Supernatural, with your narrator, famous author, lecturer, and expert on strange and weird events, Walter Gibson. Thank you, Charles Woods. The rivers of the Old South are rich with Spanish moss and memories of great days. The plantation houses stand like old ghosts on the river banks. This is the story of a plantation house we shall call Greenwood Acres. In 1952, an army lieutenant named Seth Proctor, while on leave, found himself in a small backwater town in Georgia. He had gone fishing along a wandering stream loaded with water lilies. And when he got back, he told his landlady about it. That's right, Mrs. Daniels. It was big. Biggest place I ever saw. On the bank of the river, Lieutenant, a house? Yeah, one of those plantation houses. <laughs> you sure this isn't one of your fish stories, you young men all in that No, no, no. I didn't even catch any fish. I just snarled my line on those water lilies. Now, there's no house up that bank. Oh, there. but there is. I saw it. Had four columns out in front. Big willow tree right on the bank. You just must be mistaken, Lieutenant. There ain't been any folks there since way back. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You must mean Greenwood Acres. What's Greenwood Acres? Old, old plantation. Went to seed more than 50 years ago. Went to seed? Yeah. There was a tragedy sometime around the Civil War. From that time on, it just went downhill. The house is nothing but an old ruin now. Oh, no. It must be a different place, then. The one I saw was new. The next day, Lieutenant Proctor went out fishing again. And again, he found himself pulling through mats of water lilies toward a willow tree that hung over the bank and oak trees festooned with Spanish moss. Through the heavy trees came the perfume of magnolias, and he saw the gleaming white portico of the huge house. Oh, that's it. And it is new. My landlady was wrong. And these water lilies, thicker than molasses, can't move to them. Hmm. Sounds like a mockingbird or a catbird. Wait a minute, I used to imitate birds. <clears throat> Let's see. That's <laughs> not bad. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, who's that? Jackie. Who, who's talking? I, I, I don't see it. Oh, swimming in the water. <laughs> What are you, a, a mermaid? That yellow hair of yours, I mistook you for a water lily. I wish I could get through to where you are. These water lilies are too thick. Where have we met? Was it at an army post dance? It is you. Sure it is. At least it always has been. What I want to know is who you are. Hey, look out. Get back to shore. There's an alligator. Get back to shore. <laughs> Uh, no, thanks. But there must be another way into that plantation. A road or something. Oh, road, long 
don't seem to overgrow. I tried. After she got back on shore and I couldn't get through the water lilies, I took the rowboat back and tried by land. Nothing. Mm. You just must have dreamed it all. Don't tell me what I dreamed, Mrs. Daniels. I saw her. She spoke to me. I didn't get a very good look at her. She got out of the water. All that blonde hair. First time I ever heard of a soldier not looking at a pretty girl. Well, she didn't seem to be wearing much. That's the bathing suits they wear these days. It's scandalous. It, it was like a dream. Yeah, that's just exactly what it was. The house through the trees, white and shining. The birds singing. And then her. I never saw her before, but how does she know me? She knows you. Well, she called me by name. My first name. Seth. times during the afternoon, Lieutenant Seth Proctor tried to get to Greenwood Acres, but all the roads were obliterated. That evening, he spent an hour at the local library. It was back in 1865 I read the whole story. So that's where you've been, at the library. Yep. Now look, there was a girl named Laura who was in love with a northern soldier named Seth Langley. Her uncle Cassius killed Langley. <laughs> Yeah, and Laura pined away and died of a broken heart. Gee, I wish there'd been a picture of her. Did the story in the library say what she looked like? No, it said she was beautiful, and she had blonde hair. Oh. Like the girl you saw? It can't be the same girl. Oh, of course it can. Unless you dreamed it like you said. I didn't dream it. She was there. I saw her. She called me by name. And the house was new, shining white and new. <laughs> now, where are you going? There's a moon tonight. I'm going back. Well, you can't get in. I've thought of a way. I'll take a canoe instead of a rowboat. A canoe? A canoe won't get tangled up in those water lilies. It'll glide right over them. Lieutenant, if I was you, I'd forget it. Just plain forget it. Dory said the bird call was the same. I can do that bird call. Now, Lieutenant, please. Don't you go being foolish. Hmm? <laughs> What's foolish about it? If everything else is the same, that means her Uncle Cassius might be around, too. With that same gun. What's it? To use on me? Well, your name's Seth, ain't it? You're a soldier like he was. It's not the same. This is 1952. A girl had blonde hair, and the house is new. No, I'm going. You know what I did on the veranda again, Lola? Seth will come again. He's dead. Uh-huh. I'll see him again. He's dead. He's been dead for years. And I'll do it again, I tell you. I'll shoot him again. I will, I tell you. <laughs> I never hardly got past the veranda before Uncle Cassie shot at me. This time we fooled him, didn't we? Oh, say. Laura. Laura. Who is that? There, standing over near the house. Now you 
just stay right in that bed, Lieutenant. <laughs> Doctor said you should wait. My shoulder. Lucky you wasn't killed. Oh, I'll never get over the turn you gave me. Staggering in here in the middle of the night, old bleeding. I'm... I'm all mixed up. Oh, you're all mixed up. After the shot, Laura seemed to disappear. I found myself in a canoe. I looked back. I saw the house. But it was old. It didn't look new anymore. It was old. What happened to it? What happened to Laura? Her uncle Tash is shot you. I know I was shot. The doctor took the bullet out. But the house must be new. And Laura, she must be alive. I held her in my arms. She must be alive. Lieutenant... Would you like to see the bullet? What? The doctor left it here. There it is. Right on this plate. Well, let's see it. Well, that's not from any modern gun. That's an old-fashioned bullet. From a pistol. Around the time of the Civil War. <laughs> Lieutenant Proctor went back when he recovered, but he never again found the house, old or new. But the wound in his shoulder was real, and so was the lead bullet, a bullet that had been fired out of the distant past. A story true, but strange. Walter Gibson, your expert on the supernatural. Stories of ghosts, of spirits, werewolves, and voodoo. And each story you hear is true, but... Strange with Walter Gibson as your expert was directed by Clark Andrews. In the cast were Alice Cross and Court Benson. This is Charles Woodspeak.